Hello world and welcome back to another episode of Ars Nouveau where today we're going to be covering more of the add-on type mods such as Ars Elemental and Ars Instrumentum. Starting off, it's good to know that when you have Ars Elemental installed, there are some fundamental changes that happen to the vanilla base mod. Here is just the, well, here is all of them actually. Enchanter's shield can trigger reactive on any types of blocks. Uh, summoning lightning won't actually destroy items. Ignite melts ice blocks into water. Uh, crush can process items if augmented with sensitive. And cold snap deals more damage to mobs that are freezing. So these are the fundamental changes that happen when Ars Elemental is installed. If Ars Elemental isn't installed, none of these will happen. So Lightning will destroy items, for example, with just base Ars Nouveau. Starting off, we're going to go over all the new spells that have been added with this mod. The first one is going to be Tier 1 spells, where we get our first sort of augment. We have Conjure Terrain here. And what this will do is when we fire it, obviously, it's going to create some terrain here. Now, I'm not sure if it's always dirt. I have a feeling that it is going to always be dirt. But as you can see, it just creates terrain. So it's... Uh, not a bad thing to do for a little nerd pole. Everything else for tier one are filters. And basically these filters go into uh, not or yes. <laughs> now it's kind of hard to explain this, but uh, simply if we go over the tool tip, um, this one will stop the tail from resolving if the target is an aquatic animal. And then this one, this the spell stops from resolving unless it is a aquatic animal. So essentially that means if you actually say, let's say, do harm, if you hit harm on a fish, it's not going to attack them with this one. But on this one, it only attacks the fish on harm if it is an aquatic creature. I hope that makes sense. Uh, so basically one is a don't work if it, unless it's one of these. And one of them is make it work if it's only one of these. So we have fish, we have fireproof, we have insect, we've got undead, summon, and aerial so if for aerial it would be a phantom uh the the one for not an aerial means if it, if if you do attack an aerial creature it won't resolve but with this one if you do attack an aerial creature it will happen uh, but it won't happen to anything else uh summon is going to be things such as wolves and anything that you summon or vexes i think uh undead is going to be zombies and skeletons uh insects is going to be spiders and fireproof are going to be things like uh blazes and ghasts Next we have our tier 2 spells. Tier 2 spells we've got two different augmented type sort of things or your uh, projectile types and then we've got six actual abilities. The first one is going to be arc. Arc is simply going to, uh, instead of your ordinary projectile firing in a straight line, it's going to allow it to actually bend and obey gravity. So here we have conjured terrain on arc. What's going to happen is when we fire it, as you can see, it's just going to arc down and uh, obviously it's going to conjure terrain. It's just going to obey gravity. Next we have Propagated Arc, so what we're going to have here is that if we have this first and then we'll have Conjured Terrain, what it's going to do is essentially it's going to bounce your spell. So if we fire this now, as you can see, it does another arc from the position it lands, which is pretty cool. Obviously we could have this as something else, so we could have it as Projectile and then it bounces from the Projectile as long as it goes in a straight line. So if we have it from there, as you can see, it then arcs over, so it's almost like firing through a wall. If we go like this, it hits the wall, oh never mind, it hits the wall straight away there. There we go, now it bounced over. But how about we actually go into the rest of these? We have got Poison Spores, Charm, Discharge, Watery Grave, Mana Bubble, and Phantom's Grasp. First, we're going to have Poison Spores. Now, by itself, when we fire this at an enemy, it's actually not going to do anything. As you can see, I've got Projectile Poison Spores and nothing happens. That's because first, your guy needs to be affected with either Poison or Hunger. So here we go, we've got ourselves a Smash Potion of Hunger here. He is now affected with Hunger, and when I fire at him, he's now taking a bit of damage, as you can see here. Now you can see these spores, they're all flying around him, and as you can see, that is actually now going to spread to other guys as well, just like so. We fire at them, and now it's actually going to start affecting the others. So it's a way, if you fire it into a crowd, it's going to essentially spread the poison across everyone else. Now, something we can do with this is using a different spell called Infuse. Infuse is actually going to allow us to pull a potion out of a flask or potion that's in our inventory. So here we've got a flask with full of eight charges of hunger. So what should happen now is when I fire this at the creeper, what's going to happen is first it's going to put the potion down. But now when I fire it across other people, the others are going to get uh, also affected as well. So as you can see, I hit him once and then I can spread the spell to others. As you can see, we now have this AoE effect. Now it is obviously splashing the spell every time, so you you may want to have sort of a uh, you might want to have two different spells, one that is in fuels and one that is poison spores. Uh, that way you can spread the one potion effect across multiple enemies. 
Next up we're gonna have is Charm. Now Charm is gonna basically turn enemies into my allies. Now the harder they are to actually charm, the more amplifiers you need to add. So if I add this guy to here, as you can see he's not always gonna attack me, but now he is. He's now enthralled with me. Now if I attack these other fellas, he's now gonna start attacking them as well. Because they're now basically told to go fight for me. As you can see, it can take quite a few. Now, I have already added a load of amplifiers here, but sometimes it can still can take a while. As you can see, they are still attacking. They will do my bidding. Next we have here is Discharge. Now, Discharge is something else where it won't exactly affect the uh, enemy by any means normally. However, if they have the shock or charged effect like this, as you can see, this guy is now shocked one. If I use discharge on him now, it is going to take effect. Now, this works better when there is a whole group of people. So if we have lightning on just one and then do discharge, it's going to actually charge that discharge across multiple enemies. So we probably do want to add the AOE effect here so it has a wider range. So we'll try this one more time. We'll have lightning here first to affect these guys. And then if we do discharge, it will affect a wider range area. As you can see here, we've got some zapped, and now these guys are shocked as well. And the, the discharge is going to be shocked between all these different enemies nearby. Now, the cool thing about this as well is if you are playing with a mod that has armor, um, the mobs that spawn with, say, armor that's using RF, it will discharge some of that power out of the RF tools as well. Next up we have is Watery Grave, and this is going to cause mobs that uh, want to kill us to, when they are in water, basically fall down. Now these guys, obviously they can swim, however I, if I hit water grave on them, they're going to slowly sink down. And now they are going to be able to get out in time, but if we add uh, extend time onto this, they are going to start falling for a lot longer, as you can see, and they are going to lose their breath for longer, as you can see here. When you have extend time on them, it basically puts their breathing time to zero, so they nearly basically run out of breath straight away and drown. <laughs> This could be worked in conjunction with summon water, so you could put them in water and then drown them in their own water you've spawned. This guy has a lot of health though. Next up we have more of a defensive one, and this is called Mana Bubble. When you activate this, it's going to give you, obviously, as it says, a Mana Bubble. This will cause you to have less damage from enemies, and also deflect some mana attacks if you are playing in multiplayer. This also, when you have Hellfire Burn on yourself, if you have a water focus on you, which we'll be covering later, it will cure your Hellfire Burn. Next we have Phantom Grass. If we have these, this is actually going to heal some undead enemies. So if I have this guy, let's just damage this guy a little bit. He has now taken three points of damage. If I now fire this at him, as you can see, it's just given him some health. Now the interesting thing about this is when you use this on yourself, let's go into survival mode for these. These guys are going to probably start chasing me. If I use it on myself, uh, as you can see, it's actually going to start bringing down my saturation. Now, this can be a good thing for you if obviously you're playing with some sort of pack that uh, when you eat things, it gives you more heart. So it's a good way of doing that quickly. Um, but it will also do, also do some other things. The spell will deal an equal amount of magic and exhaustion damage, depleting their saturation and hunger. So you also lose mana. If you fire this at someone else, they'll lose mana and saturation if you are playing in multiplayer. But now we move on to tier 3 spells, where we only have a handful of things. We have got homing projectile, we've got propagate homing, and then we have the link life. Or life link, rather. First off, we've got homing, and you can probably guess what this is. It's going to actually harm itself an enemy. So here we have got homing, but it's just on a, uh, uh, a lovely homing missile. And as you can see, when it goes near an enemy, it's going to change its course and actually start hitting an enemy. I don't know which one it's going to hit in particular. I assume it's just the one that it comes in contact first. Next, we have Propagate Homing. What this is going to essentially do is that it's going to add a second half of the effect to go to someone else. So we're going to have Homing first. In fact, let's change this to something else. We'll do Projectile, Harm, and then we'll do Propagate Homing, and then Ignite. So what's going to happen here is we're going to have a series of enemies, if we're out of peaceful mode. We're going to have a series of enemies. When we fire this at one of them, what's going to happen is a Projectile Missile is going to come off, and as you can see, it instantly went for someone else. So it doesn't matter where we actually end up hitting. As you can see, it starts going to somewhere else. Uh, but don't be too close to the wall, otherwise it can uh, glitch out like this as well sometimes. It doesn't exactly always hit the same guy, but eventually it does get to them. Next we have is Life Link. Now this is going to be interesting. What happens here is that any damage that affects this guy is also going to happen to us. So you can see it's for 30 seconds, but if I hit this guy, I should actually start taking damage as well. See, this guy hits me, but he's taking damage as well. And if I hit him, I should be taking damage too. But uh, I suppose it doesn't happen on self-inflicting. Uh, but yeah, every time he hits me, he's getting hit as well. The same token happens though, is if I actually heal this guy, if we say instant health on this guy, when he gets healed, I also get healed too. So it ha works both ways. 
In order to sever this, obviously you uh, can wait for the timer to go out. Uh, but when you actually sever this, you can just use the cut spell on them to sever the link between uh, life links. Now, while prepping for this video, there was an update as well. And in the base vanilla uh, Ars Nouveau, there have been two new spells added. One is a tier two spell called Animated Block. And the second one is a tier three spell called Burst. These are for vanilla Ars Nouveau. The first one we have is Animated Block. This is going to be interesting. What it basically does, it's creates a block to actually fight for us. How about we don't have one that's in the in the ground? This guy, when we fight it here, as you can see, it turns into a happy friend for us. And uh, I don't know who he's going for, but he will fight for us. So if we attack one of these guys, as you can see, they're going to start attacking. Now, the interesting thing about this as well is that when they do die, they turn into a falling block, as you see here. They jump just a little bit. But you can reanimate these guys as many times as you want, and they will obviously fight for us. Now, the cool thing about these guys as well is that they do not actually grant you summoning sickness as well, unlike if you were repeatedly respawning a familiar. Now, these guys can be done out of any block. So if we have, say, an obsidian guy here... Apparently it doesn't work with obsidian. <laughs> That's a shame. Next up we have burst. Now burst is going to be similar to the propagate homing and the propagate arc. And what it's essentially going to do is resolve your spell after the fact in an AoE area or in a spherical area as it says in here. Now you can augment this in various different ways. But just to show this off we're going to have some spiders. And here we've got ignite with an AoE effect. But as well as that we're going to have burst. Burst is going to then explode the flare effect to other enemies. You can see here so it in in immediately went to the other guys as well because it exploded in an area now when you add aoe to burst it's going to affect the radius that the uh, burst effect is going to uh, work on now what you can do as well is actually use this with sensitive now i'm down in my cave here and i've got here burst with sensitive and aoe and break and what this should do is actually affect an aoe area as you can see in a sphere um for uh break so obviously the more AoE I give this, the wider I can make this as well. So we want that all the way to there. And then let's do this again. A bit of lag, but as you can see, it does a lot wider area. Now you can also do this with dampen. However, I'm not too sure what this exactly does. Now I've added here sensitive, then dampen and AoE and break. And what it seems to do is just break the outer shell. So I assume it's just going to affect the very edge of a shell. As you can see, it's left a sphere here instead of actually breaking the center. So it's a way of uh, inverting it between doing the inside and the outside. That's what Dampen does. Well, let's move on from that. That's enough about spells. How about we get into trinkets, foci, and other various things you can get inside of Ars Elemental and Ars Instrumentum. Starting off, we have the Bubble Current Elevator made with four pieces of prismarine shards, one soul sand, one water essence, and one air essence. And this is going to be basically a better bubble column. This is going to work inside of water. As you can see here, we're going to go down. And what this is going to allow us to do is basically still have a bubble column, uh, except it's going to be a little bit of a uh, deeper area, as you can see. You can hold shift to actually go down, um, but it works in a bigger area. Now, the cool thing about this as well is that uh, you don't have to have water source blocks the whole way up like you would with a piece of soul sand. Uh, so this, as you can see, works in a larger area. Similarly, we have got the magmatic current elevator made with magma blocks and a fire essence, except this is going to be a bubble column, except this time it's going to work actually inside of lava instead of water. Now, I believe I already have one down here. Yes, we do. If we hold shift again, we can go down. It is very slow, but we can go, go all the way down. And if we let go we go to the top and if we hold space we go up in even faster the last column we have here is the slipstream current elevator this is made with air essence two shulker shells a walden wing and a gold block and this is going to actually consume source to use but as you can see it's already taken effect this is going to essentially essentially allow you to hover and float in a given area almost as if you are basically in a bubble column I'm not doing anything right now um, and I'm floating up. We can hold uh, shift to go actually down. And when you do hold shift, it actually gives you slow falling as well. So you can go out of the area and fall down. So that's a pretty cool one for last as well. But just remember, you need source nearby. Something I've shown off previously, um, which was actually a little bit of a mistake, is the urn of endless water. Made with two prismarine shards, a source gem, flower pot, and two water essence, this is going to be a way of giving you infinite endless water. However, this must be supplied with a bit of source in order to create it. In order to actually use this, though, we need a dominion wand, and what we can do is simply set the position and then hold shift and right click on where you want to send this to. So this is now sending to one location, as you can see, one is which is the cauldron. But this also works to various other modded tanks as well. So we can set this to go on the ender tank, the ultimate fluid tank, and the storage tank as well from Cyclic. And it will actually send to all of them at once. As you can see, we're now sending to four locations. If we hold shift and right click, it's going to sever all the connections. 
Next up, we have a bit of an augment to your spellbook. This is what you're using with the novice spellbook, but you can do this with any tier. This is going to require all four elemental essences, any spellbook you have. So we can use the Archmage and a piece of Netherite. So I've got this set up here. If we put our Archmage one in here, it's going to give us this effect. Now, with the, uh, as you can see, what this does is give us a black outline. What this back outline is actually basically, it's almost like you're enchanting your spell book. This will actually stop your spell book from being destroyed from anything, whether you throw it in lava, um, actually throw it even in the void, throw it at a cactus, it will stop this block from actually taking any damage, so it does not ever get destroyed. Now it does say in the spell book, however, it can't guarantee it won't work from the void, but uh, it should protect it from the void as well, but it may not be a guarantee. Next up, we've got some brand new items. These are bangles, Dif different from rings. They use the bring of potential, but they turn them into bangles. The first one is the Enchanter's Bangle, made with a end crystal, source gem block, and two gold blocks. And this is basically going to increase your magic damage of genuine spells or uh, common spells. So anytime you do a spell, this is going to give it a little bit of a, de uh, a uh, buff. And now this just goes in your bangle slot. As you can see, you only get one of. Now this bangle can be upgraded into other things as well. We have got the air bangle, the earth bangle, the fire bangle, and the water bangle. And each of these are made with their respective essences. Uh, the air is made with a piston, earth is made with a cobweb, uh, fire is made with a fire charge, and water is made with a powdered snow bucket. Now these, these are going to do different things. The air bangle is going to boost your air spell damage passively and it will also give you a uh, passive speed boost and knockback uh, resistance. So you go, well I've got this equipped now and we can run a bit faster. Anything that is uh, appertaining to your air uh, in spell form is going to give you a little bit of a boost. So if we go into our spell book, all of these have different schools. Uh, so as you can see, we have the school of elemental air for discharge. Uh, for Dispel, it's a school of Abjuration. For Abjuration, it's uh, a Manipulation spell, and so on and so forth. If you've got the Earth Bangle, this is going to, again, boost Earth spells, but this is also going to give you a passive Thorns effect, and unarmed, and you will be unharmed by things such as Cacti, and you're also resistant to knockback as well. So I have this now equipped, and as you can see, Cactus is unharming me, and obviously the rest will apply. Next we have is the Fire Bangle. This will boost fire spells, who would have guessed, and also sets enemies on fire that are nearby. It'll give you a passive speed boost when you're in a hot biome. So right now I'm not in a hot biome, so I won't get a passive speed boost, but now just out of coincidence, is a beach class as a hot area? Oh uh, yeah, I think I am a little bit faster here. I can't really tell. Maybe not, but a desert, a desert you'll be a lot faster in as well as the nether. And lastly, we have the water one. Who would have guessed this will boost water spells, but it will also cause freezing on enemies that you hit, and it will give you a passive boost in uh, the water, so you can swim a little bit faster. As well as that, though, it will also allow you to um, run faster in the rain also. Let's move away from the bangles now. That is all of them. And next, we have a brand new Enchanter's item. This is the Enchanter's Horn, made with a Wilden's Horn, Air Essence, three Golden Ingots, and four Source Gems. The horn is going to essentially allow you to cast spells uh, that are on enemies and also yourself in a given area. So we all know how the horn works in vanilla Minecraft. We can hold it down for a period of time and the longer we hold it, the uh, larger the sound. Now the, lo the longer we hold it down, the larger the area of effect is going to be. Um, now when you do have it as a max charge, it's going to actually boost the damage uh, uh, in the of the spell that you do. So you're going to need a scribes table for this. And just like we have looked at in previous episodes, we've got to place the Enchanter's Horn down and then we can give ourselves a self spell here. So if we have here self, now we don't have to actually have self in here, but it's going to be a self spell. And then we can say, let's do not charm, we want to do healing. So here you go, I've gone and gone and in survival mode I've hurt myself, I've given myself healing, I can then put this on this spell here. And when I now activate this horn, what I can do is heal myself with that. Now, obviously, now we have got heal. If there are mobs nearby, it's going to heal the mobs as well, as this works in an AoE area. The longer we hold it, the lighter it goes. So we can just simply do one tick here. There you go. It did activate. As you can see, it did activate, even though the sound didn't really go off. Next up, we have got the Essence of Vanquished Foes. This is more of a supplement for the Walden Tribulant. Tribute. This is made with a Nether Star, a Totem of Undying, a Diamond Block, and an Archmage Spellbook. It has to be an Archmage Spellbook. 
Now, as you can see, this is from Ars Instrumentum and not Ars Elemental. And this is going to be, as I say, the alternative to the Walden Tribute. So you haven't, if you haven't defeated the final boss yet, or you don't think you're strong enough to defeat the final boss, then you can make one of these. Now, this is made in the Imbuement Chamber is going to, and is going to need Source. So it's not going to use up these three items as you see here, but it will use up your Diamond Block as you can see here. It takes some time to craft, but the more Source you have in here, the faster it's going to actually be. Uh, craft. Moving on to new foci. These focuses are going to be working in very similar ways. There are five different types. There is a lesser and there is a major. We're going to go over all the lesser first, respectively. So first we have got our air essence made with, uh, sorry, our air focus. And this is going to be made with air essence and amethyst and gold. All of them are made with amethyst and gold and their respective essences, except from the necrotic, which will go over last. Now, these things, they do various things. The uh, strength, the lesser air focus is going to basically strengthen all air spells and also give you a discount. However, it's going to weaken your other spells as well. So if you have your air focus um, on here, oh, it appears I've made a bit of lightning there as well with this thing as well. So uh, be careful of that. Um, <laughs> this uh, obviously goes in your one slot. You only get one focus slot. So if you want to use your, say, uh, focus of uh, shape manipulation uh, from Vanilla Ars Nouveau, you won't be able to use that at the same time as you can see here. But yeah, there you go. <laughs> we can make lightning with this. Or at least thunder. Uh, next we have Earth. Again, this is going to increase uh, the Earth spells, but also uh, it's going to weaken other spells now. And then we have Fire also, also obviously um, does fire spells, and it gives you that little burn sound there when you're quick of it. And then we have Water, which obviously weak, uh, strengthens water. Now this last one here is more of a crafting component, but it can be used for one thing. This is the Anima Essence, and this is made with a Source Gem, Golden Apple, Bone Meal, and a with a Skeleton Skull in an Imbuement Chamber. All of these are made in an Imbuement Chamber, I should say. And this thing, it doesn't do anything by itself. You can't equip it in this slot, as it isn't actually a focus. However, the only thing that I can see that it does do is that if we spawn ourselves in a horse, uh, just like so. What you can actually do is use it on the horse to turn it into its different skins. So you can actually have uh, a skeleton horse and a zombie horse if you so wish, uh, which is an interesting quirk of this. Now, in order to upgrade all of these foci, you're going to need this new thing, the Mark of Mystery. This is going to be using a Walden Tribute. However, I do believe that you can use um, this fella over here, which we are going to test out. And this is made with all of the different types of essences, this Anima Essence and then the Wild and Tribute. So let's just see this here. Uh, it does not seem to work with the Essence of Anquish Foes, which is annoying. But with the Wild and Tribute, it will make this in the Imbuement Chamber and it will give us five Marks of Mystery, I do believe. Now, with these Marks of Mystery, as you can see here, we can turn all of our Lessers into their Majors. So we've got ourselves the Focus of Air, the Focus of Earth, the Focus of Fire and the Focus of Water. Now, all of these are going to be made inside the Imbuement Chamber. Actually, no, I'm wrong. These are all going to be made in the Inch Chanting apparatus, and these are going to need 5,000 source respectively in order to make each of these. Now, these are going to be able to do different things. As you see here, the air is going to give us me, uh, mana regen 1 uh, when shocked or above 2000, uh, 200 uh, Y level. So if I have this here, and if we go all the way up to Y200, um, which is going to be a little bit uh, higher, we're actually going to get regen 1. Now, in order to get shocked, of course, you're going to need to strike yourself with lightning or some other way of getting your shocked effects to give you that mana regen as well. So just a second here, we should go over 200 and there we go. We now have mana regen. Earth, here we go. It's going to give you mana regen 1, but only when you are under the Y level 0. Here you go. I'm now down at level, let's see, minus 11 and I have mana regen. As well as this, when you have this equipped, you have a plus 2 knockback resistance. Next, we have the uh, Focus of Fire. This is going to increase your spell damage by two while you're on fire or in lava, which is pretty cool. So let's get ourselves some uh, lava here. And uh, I'm not sure if it's actually going to tell us that it has that effect. But if we get into lava here, uh, here you go. It says in the top right hand corner here, we have got spell damage three. Now here's going to be something interesting. If we go and actually go into game mode uh, survival, am I going to be? Ah, I'm still not immune to fire, it seems. And then we have the Focus of Water. This is going to give you Mana Regen when you are wet and Mana Regen 2 when you are in water or with Dolphin's Grace. So just by itself, it's not going to do anything. But when I'm in water, we get Mana Regen. Uh, when I'm out of here, I should still be able to get wet. So I sp I, when it's raining, I'm going to have Mana Regen 1. But when I'm in the water, I should get Mana Regen 2. There you go. And we have Dolphin's Grace now. It gives us Dolphin Grace. 
Moving on to the back here, this is where we get the focus of necromancy. Now this is made with an enchanting table, and this is where we have the focus of summoning two wither roses, a wither skull, and an anima essence. As you can see, I told you it was used for a crafting thing. Now what this is going to do is going to change the effects of your summons. Now what do I mean by this? How about we first slick this on here, so now we've got this bangle here, and what I've now done is made a, a summon steed spell. Now usually this would give us a load of horses, but when I do this here, as you can see, it actually ends up giving us a skeleton horse, which is a little bit different. Now, the cool thing about the skeleton horse as well is that this guy can actually, you know, swim and walk on water. So it's a very powerful steed we have here now. And uh, he does also have another effect, which it says in the book, he can actually breathe underwater if it gets stuck underwater. Now, the other cool things that this does is that it also boosts any spells that are from the uh, necrotic spell type. So there are many different uh, spells in here that are from that school. Now, the way you know it's from that school, it doesn't say necrotic spell, it says anima, an anima spell type. So we can give ourselves, say, heal here on that. Let's do self. Uh, with a heal spell, it's going to actually give us a couple of free heals. So it's going to be a little bit more powerful. So let's see, am I still taking damage in here? Oh, no, I'm not in full damage now. But the heal spell is going to give us a little bit more. Other spells like hex here from the anima thing, they're going to get two free extend times. So what we can do here is do projectile hex. What we could do is amplify this to the max. We could do a couple of extend times, but then we'll get two more extend times on the end as well, as well, which is pretty cool. So we could hit this guy with hex. And uh, as you can see, he's got hex five, but it's going to last for a long time. One minute, 15 right off the bat. And the last thing is charm, which we showed off earlier. Charm is way more chance to affect undead mobs instead of, say, things like uh, creepers and spiders. Next up, we have another item from... Um, Ars Instrumentum, and this is the Charm of Numeric Manor. This is made with a piece of paper, two pieces of gold, a diamond, an ink sack, and a dull trinket inside of the enchanting table. And this is going to give you a numerical mana indicator. Now, I'm not entirely sure what this means. I'm assuming it means with my spell book. As you can see down in the corner, it actually gives me numbers. This isn't something with vanilla Ars Nouveau. However, I don't think that uh, you get this by default. I'm obviously in a creative world, so it gives it to me, I think, all the time. So I'm sure that when you wear this pendant, I believe you wear it down here in the charm slot. This is what gives you this mana of value down here uh, as well as that i'm not sure if the mana value is given in this bar unless you're wearing it in a survival world all it says in the book is for mages that needs every bit of data the miracle mana charm as a numerical mana indicator while worn in the charm slot so that's all it tells me that it does so that's what i'm assuming that it does and what i've been using this entire time is just because i'm in creative mode next up we've got the scroll of spell transfer made with a blank parchment source gem an ink sack and a feather this is going to basically allow us to do whole spells between different books so inside my uh enchanted archmage spell book we have got the dispel spell here it's very simple to make and obviously you could recreate it in another one but if you had something really complicated and strung out what you could do is take this scroll of spell transfer shift right click this onto it and now this is set as you can see here and if we got ourselves another book here we've got ourselves an archmage spell book and as you can see it's got absolutely no spells in it whatever so if you wanted to select a specific page you want to pre-select that in here we'll just go to select one and what we do is if we hold our spell book in our off hand and then our scroll of spell transfer in our main hand and hold shift and right click it will do that spell but at the same time it's going to as you can see apply the spell now in our number one slot as you see here so just bear that in mind if you have a massive explosion spell don't do it while you're facing a wall because it will still fire that spell so make sure you're in in the open otherwise uh things could end up terribly bad Next up, we have the Spellcaster's Bag. This is made with seven blaze fibers, one chest, and a diamond. And this is simply going to hold all your trinkets and armors in the game. So you can hold three different, uh, or basically, it's a, it's a handheld chest. You can hold loads of different things in here. You can hold the horn. You can hold, um, uh, I don't think you can hold familiars and stuff in here because you end up using them up. Uh, the dowsing rod. Oh, I'm surprised you can't do that. Enchanter's Eye. Yes, lovely. The sword. Wonderful as well as other focuses. So if we go at ours elemental, we could have our focuses in here. Oh, no, you can't. I'm very surprised. Maybe this isn't as good as I want. It's it's only trinkets only then, I suppose. So whatever the book deems as a trinket, which is a little bit of a shame, really. I guess magical equipment only. So bangles, amulets, belts. Um, yeah, the shield, um, flasks. It, I mean, these are counted as trinkets in here. So I'm a bit confused. Maybe it's only the full focuses. I guess not. Very strange. This can obviously hold other things like armor as well as 
also it can do arrows as well i believe from ars nouveau also there you go so equipment arrows and armors that's all it can hold no other things like foci or anything so if it's wearable you can put it in here if you can fire it you can put it in here now this also can be opened with j by default so if you have it anywhere in your hotbar you can just press j oh never mind anywhere in your hotbar not in your inventory now the last thing we're going to show off today is the wizard's armarium this is made with two mage bloom fibers two blaze rods two diamonds and ender chest and a manipulation essence with a mundane belt in the enchanting apparatus and this is going to give you your wizard's armarium this is going to allow us to store up to three different armors and hot bar sets that you can automatically switch to now i have got myself here nothing on right now so how about i put on this sorceress armor which i just spawned in as you can see i've got these things on my hot bar now if i just press n here which is the key I've set. As you can see, I've switched to my Battle Mage armor and everything in my hotbar has disappeared. My inventory has stayed the same. I've still got my uh, two spell transfers here and my other uh, Archmage's book. But my hotbar has completely changed. If I press N again, I've switched once again and my hotbar has changed even though I've got nothing in it. So let's just put this in here for exampling reasons. If we press N again, we go back to where we were. So as you can see, every time I hit N, I can switch this around. Now, I do not believe N is the default controls, but if we go into here and we look at the N key, uh, what we have here is the wizards, or let's go like this, wizard here, switch wizard armarium, mine's to N, this is allowing you to switching. Now you can do this as well as a radial menu with K, so if I hold down or press K here, as you can see, I can switch to uh, any different type. So it's a good way of having three different types of armors used for different things, so you can have a building um one you could have a uh, a fighting one you could have an in-between one for maybe around your base now as you can see it does only change your hot bar as well so you can use this as a little bit of extra storage as well you would essentially get an extra 18 slots using your other two sets which would be very very nice but for today guys that is going to be everything we're going to have time for to show off this is not the end of ours new though we still have a couple more things to show off with ours elemental and we still have to go over turrets in ours new though which we're going to be covering with the ours elemental episode as well there was a lot to pack into this episode today's which is why i had to cut it off here uh, otherwise this episode will probably go on for about two hours but if this video helped you out in any way shape or form please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and ring the bell button to stay notified when these videos go live but until next time guys take care